Hey friends, I haven't done an update like this in a few years, to be honest, and I thought it'd be a good idea to just have some real talk because we're all real people. Everybody on this platform, all the self healers, all of the coaches, all of us guides, we are all human. We are all going through challenges. And um, I used to do this, this episode or this talk called Real Talk, where I would update you guys on my healing journey and um, just show you that it's not linear and that there are ups and downs. And what I'm sharing today is an update on myself those of you who've been following me for a while know about my healing journey from all things including POTS and CFS and mast cell and you know like all of the you know uh, typical chronic illnesses if you want a list you can go check my <laughs> my page but what I haven't really been speaking as much about after that you know, recovery from chronic invisible illness is my experience the last year. So about a year ago, I was uh, pretty much in the prime of my life. Um, after chronic illness, I had I felt amazing. We moved into a new home, everything was falling into place. And then we suffered a massive tragedy, the loss of my father. And that experience shook me to my core. And one thing about grief that nobody talks about, the, just this experience of loss, is that it feels a lot like nervous system dysregulation. It feels a lot like chronic illness in a way. So obviously the experiences are different, but the experience of grief can be experienced most often it's experience. From a mind, body, and soul perspective, it hits every single part of you. It's not just an emotion, but it hits the nervous system. I had never experienced grief to this extent before. And I'm gonna be honest, it, it really did, I mean, it did shake me. And, um, and for a time, I did go back into a dysregulated state. And as I've been riding the waves of grief this past year, um, the anniversary of my dad's passing is December 4th. And um, this has been one of the most difficult journeys I've ever been on because such loss and grief, I mean, it's something that we can't fully prepare for. You know, we all know we are going to experience it at some time or another, but we're never fully prepared for it. And I don't think you can prepare for it. Um, I know for myself, I had a lot of old coping mechanisms pop back up. I had um, old neurology show up and I recognized it. I knew what it was, so I didn't come from it at it from a place of fear. I recognized I'm like, wow, you know, this major stress. This has been the ma biggest stress probably in my entire life that I've experienced. And of course, there's going to be, it's going to be felt from a nervous system perspective. Like my entire mind, body, and soul has been affected by that and been touched by it in some way. And so this past year has been a bit of a roller coaster. Um, you know, aside from, I should also mention that, you know, during his passing, I also had the virus and and um, so I know that to a certain extent that affected me, but I really believe it was grief at the core. So I, I went back to my tools, guys. I do what I teach, you know, I listen um, to my own advice and I know that's a really important thing to do when you're especially in this field is like, yeah, I could give and dish out this advice and teach it all I want, but if I'm not using it, then um, that says a lot about me. 
So I went back to basics. I started doing my rounds again and not to rewire the grief. We have to understand that I'm, I wasn't trying to ignore, push away the grief, but I was just trying to convince my survival brain that there was some safety here. And what was hard about losing my father is because he was, um, he was my safety. He was my safety blanket. He was everything. Um, let's just say he was my rock and I felt safe with him. So when I was going through chronic illness, and um, he, you know, I had him by my side, I always knew I was gonna be okay. And he gave me strength, he encouraged me, he supported me, and he loved me. And I'm so lucky that I had that. Um, and so you can imagine when I, when I lost him, that there was a whole new experience um, for me, right? And I had to find, I had to really cultivate a new sense of safety because he was one of my biggest resources. So I, like I said, started retraining again. I was just uh, focusing on calming my nervous system, but also focusing on feeling because grief can be a very difficult emotion to feel and when we take the time for it and experience it in small doses it it can be transformational it can really help us move past all of these emotions and feelings um, or move through them i wouldn't say past them but move move with so um like i said i did some brain retraining I really focused heavily on somatic work, which started with Sarah Jackson's uh, Restore program, which is absolutely excellent. There was a point after my dad passed where I went into full, full freeze, um, dorsal vagal shutdown, and uh, her exercises really did help me come out of that really slowly, right, and experience some grief. Um, release some grief through that through the body. I did try EMDR for a while and it was too soon and it was too it was uh, too much for my nervous system at that time because it had only been two months since he had passed and so I put that aside and focused on just going gently and a compassionate approach. I did Sarah's Restore and then I started working with a somatic experiencing therapist and what was great is that when I started to see her there was someone that I could co-regulate with. Um, you know, my family obviously experienced this loss as well. So the people that I would normally turn to for support during a time like this were dealing with their own stuff. And so I reached out to somebody that could support me in that way that I needed. And so I started to see her um, bi-weekly and we worked through a couple of, um, you know, really big, things that reveal themselves through this grief, grief journey. We, you know, did some inner child work together, healed some wounds, um, really focused on signaling safety to the body. And then slowly I started to build this sense of confidence in myself and belief that, hey, this is really hard. Yes, this is absolutely heartbreaking, but I'm going to be okay. And so fast forward, you know, this past year has felt like a blur. I'm not going to lie. It has not been, it has not been easy to move through. And, um, and, you know, especially this month. So November is the month where he was admitted to the hospital. And, we, you know, last time I spoke to him, last time I talked to him. And, um, and it is a really hard month. And so what I'm noticing and again, I'm just noticing with curiosity, without judgment, without assigning meaning. I'm just noticing that my body is feeling it. It is, you know, it's like a muscle memory that gets activated. At first, when November came along, I didn't necessarily understand why I started to feel some sense of dysregulation again. 
um, and nothing like before this these are more subtle things like started to feel anxious or you know getting more headaches than usual and um, and then I realized it is the time you know my body remembers my body remembers what we went through last year at this time my body remembers the huge loss my body remembers the love my dad had for me and that I have for him still. And so I've been taking it very gently and slowly. I notice there are times where the grief is so intense where I go into more of a freeze or shutdown state. And what I do for that is I do, I turn to my somatic tools, my um, vagus nerve exercises, journaling, um, a few other tools that I have in my toolbox and I just see it for what it is. It is a part of healing. It is nothing to be ashamed of or nothing to judge. It is just where I'm at on this journey of grief and and most often than not I you know come out of it really quickly because I know what it is but the grief is still there and that's okay. You know it's gonna be there probably for life. It's going to change, it's going to evolve just like I change and evolve and it's probably not going to feel as intense and as heavy. But the one thing that I can say and I'm trying to preach to all of you is that although I can't take away the pain, although I can't rewire it, although I can't go back in time, there are things that we can do to slowly and gently support ourselves through the process of loss through immense grief, through intense emotions. And, and that's just been my journey. I wanted to really just share with you guys that, uh, you know, it hasn't, this past year has not been great. And things do happen on the other side of recovery that we're not quite expecting, we're not quite prepared for, but having the tools that we have or the resources that we've learned because of chronic illness, I do believe helps us uh, move through or move with this experience. So I'm sharing today for anyone who's going through the experience of grief or loss, for anyone who's having a hard time um, dealing with, with some sort of grief, whatever it might be, that you're not alone, that you know, even coaches and people who are further along in their journey still experience things like this when, when they, you know, when there's a new stress that they've never experienced before. And we do exactly what we tell you guys to do, which is to resource ourselves, to use intuitively the tools that we know are going to help, and most importantly, to reach out for help when we need it. Just because I'm a coach or a guide, I don't have all the answers and I recognize that. And I also recognized when the, the grief was just too much for me to bear and I needed someone to be there for me and to hold me. And they made all the difference. So if you're going through a season of grief, I want you to just notice where you're at and then be, pay attention to what it is you need. Do you need external support? Do you need someone to talk to? Do you need to tend to your body? Do you need to process your emotions? Do you need more tools and resources to help? So I uh, just wanted to share an update with you guys. Um, I asked for your patience as well if you've messaged me and I haven't gotten back to you this month. It's just a really heavy time and I'm honoring that. So. Um, I love you all. Please stay tuned for anyone who is going through a season of grief. I am working on a resource um, and a masterclass that I'm going to be um, presenting where I will be giving some of these resources and tips and tools so that it can help you guys move with your grief and make it a little lighter, a little more bearable and how to help you move through it especially from an emotional perspective, because I know that that can be the most difficult. Thank you for listening. Um, sending you so much love.